Welcome to our Reflection for the Fellside team on this 23rd of December as we are almost at Christmas. And on this day we're coming to the final of the great O antiphons that we have been following these last few days. The O antiphons, if you've not been following us on the WhatsApp group, are a series of cries and prayers that were used as part of the monastic office of Vespers, the forerunner of our Evensong, as the introduction to the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. And they contain within them um, three different aspects. There is the O, oh, that great cry of our hearts, that recognition that there is something in us that desperately needs God and what God has to offer us. They then come to uh, a different facet of the nature, the character, the person of God revealed to us in Jesus Christ. And so starting on the 17th of December, the first of them, we had a wisdom, the one in whom the wisdom of God resides. Then the next day it was, O oh Lord, the one to whom we owe our allegiance. That was followed by O Root of Jesse, the, the sign of God's purposes to the nations, that uh, the salvation of God wasn't just for the people of Israel, but for all peoples. Then we had O Key of David, uh, the one through whom all God's promises were to be fulfilled, um, the salvation unlocked. And then uh, on Monday, we came to O Dayspring, the one through whom the light of the nations shines. And yesterday, O King of the nations, uh, the one who is above all kingdoms, above all rulers, above all nations. And then finally today, we have O Emmanuel, O God with us, the God who is in his love, always with us and for us. And the full O antiphon for today goes like this. O Emmanuel, our King, our Lord giver, the hope of the nations and their Saviour, come and save us, O Lord our God. And you can hear in that the cry of the heart uh, of those who pray this prayer that desire for God who is with us in Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us, that's its meaning. God with us who breaks into his creation in the babe of Bethlehem, not as some mighty lord, some ruler, some victor who comes with armies and everything else like that, which was perhaps something of what the people of Israel expected but God who is with us in the vulnerability and in the weakness of the babe of Bethlehem, yet the one through whom God's salvation was to be wrought uh, in the man of Nazareth and in the Saviour who dies on the cross and who is raised to life that first Easter day. Emmanuel, God with us. But that antiphon also contains... Um, the idea of the king and law giver, the one to whom we owe allegiance, the one in whom the law uh, is not only given, but is fulfilled. And if you've been listening or reading rather the, the WhatsApp these last few days, you'll have seen bits of the prophecy of Isaiah, the hope of the nations. Uh, the Messiah was not just for the people of Israel, but for all peoples, and was to be a saviour. Come and save us, the prayer says. And of course, the name Jesus means the Lord saves. And so in his name and in who he was growing, going to grow into, we have this idea of the salvation of God all caught up. And when you think that those O antiphons were the introduction to the Magnificat uh, and 
you then need to think about what that Magnificat says about the idea of God who saves. And so listen to its words again. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour because he has looked upon the lowliness of his servant. Yes, from now onwards, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His faithfulness extends age after age to those who fear him. He has used the power of his arm he has routed the arrogant of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and lifted high the lowly. He has filled the starving with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, mindful of his faithful love, according to the promise which he made to our ancestors of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The picture that we have of God's saving love worked out through this child of Mary is one of God who is going to make a difference in the world, to be world transforming. And uh, even as we see it in the Song of Mary and then we see it lived out in the person of Jesus, we have God who saves and whose interest is particularly for the vulnerable, for the weak, for the poor for those who are dispossessed, for those who are on the outskirts uh, of society, for those who are the strangers, the foreigners in our midst. And these are the people to whom God promises his salvation. And so as we seek to be God's people, as we seek to be God's people, even in the midst of these troubling and strange times of pandemic, of disruption among the nations of environmental chaos and degradation we need God who saves God who meets us in our brokenness and brings his salvation to it and that's perhaps as right that is as it should be because the image that we are given of God in and through the person of of Jesus is not somebody who comes and in some magic wand waving kind of way suddenly makes everything all right but God who rather meets us in our brokenness and meets us in the messes that we make of life and he brings salvation this is the the God of death and resurrection uh, he meets us in the broken places and he brings us resurrection hope and brings us resurrection life and it's that God who is with us even this Christmas tide as we wonder how we're going to celebrate it and, and, and what's going to be possible and all the complexities and the difficulties that this pandemic brings to us. It's even here and it's even now that we know God with us, the God who saves. O Emmanuel, O King and our Lord Giver, the hope of the nations and their saviour. Come and save us, O Lord our God. Amen. <laughs>